So today we're taking a look at this Schaefer call station. Let's go ahead and get started. So these buttons are Schaefer and they're from a Tissen elevator. So you see here it says Tissen. There's no Krupp in there, it's just Tissen. So taking a look at the front of the panel, there's the Tissen logo at the top and then there's just the two buttons. Now this type of Schaefer button is the KT28. This is a metal button that's kind of clicky and has an LED in the corner. We turn to the back, specifically the side, you can see the information and you can also see where it says KT28 on the side. There's also a wiring schematic, which we'll get to in a little bit. So something that's quite interesting about these Schaefer buttons is the modularity of them. They can be mounted directly to the plate, just like we're seeing here, or they can be back mounted to a box and then the plate sits on top. Each of these buttons have a separable base and this base can be used with a bunch of different types of Schaefer buttons. Then there's the button top portion, and in this case, if we want to take a look at it, we'll have to unscrew it from the panel. And this is what the button looks like without anything on it. So this entire piece could be replaced or swapped out with a different type of button. And it simply just plugs into the base. This here is the information on the button, specifically this one, which is the KT28. So looking on the side shows the information for the wiring and what pins do what. So 11, 21, 13, 23, and 12, 22 correspond to the switch. L1 and L2 are for an incandescent bulb, and 14 and 24 are for an LED. In this case, we're not using an incandescent bulb, so we would be using the 14 and 24. It shows that the LED is 30 volts max. As for the numbers, if I turn the button over, you can see the different numbers on the bottom that correspond to the different parts. And then bringing over the base, those same numbers are also available on the connectors. This is also where you can see where L1 and L2 are. And in the middle, there is the lamp socket for an incandescent bulb. The button can be taken further apart and that's really easy. Just poke in on the sides and then pull it out. This is what the button cap looks like. This here is the space for the lamp holder. So this is where the light would go if there was one. However, in this case, this is a metal button cap, so having a light in this spot would do absolutely nothing. Except there is the small hole that is cut for the LED. Brings us to the inner workings of the button. On the left side is the switch, and the LED is up on top. Down there, you can see the resistor and the diode. So now that we've taken a look at the buttons in more depth, let's get this thing wired up. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the bases to make it just a little bit easier to work with. And so I can see the numbers of each of the connectors. If you would like some more information about these buttons, you can head to my website where I'll have some more information posted, including a couple of schematics and all of the pins on the bases. With that being said, it's time to begin wiring. So these Schaefer buttons are nice and easy to work on. They're easy to wire up, and I'm very happy with how this piece came out. Hope you enjoyed this project video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next project.